Hi everybody and welcome to a new custom roller coaster build. Now today we're going to be building a tiny little compact coaster in uh, Dinky Park here. Now Dinky Park might also be called Pokey Park depending on what version of the game that you've got. Um, but basically it's that tiny little park uh, where there's uh, only a very small amount of space originally. You can build out here, you can buy some land out here, but it's uh, what I wanted to try and do is uh, see if I could beat the objective using only the original uh, footprint. Um, so I actually managed to do that already. What I'm going to be doing here is building, rebuilding one of the coasters I had here already. Um, and what I'm trying to get across here is you don't need to spend a fortune on a on an effective coaster. You can uh, you can get away with building a very small, cheap design, which is just sort of just as effective as a, a big com uh, a big complex one. So we're going to be building a steel mini coaster, which is the equivalent of the junior coaster in uh, the newer versions of the game. Oops. Now we're going to be starting at a slightly higher elevation. 16. So first things first, we'll build our station platform. Now with small designs like this, you really want to you want to get your entrance and exit set up straight away because with compact designs, it's very easy to take up all of your usable space with the coaster itself. And you might find that you've built a very nice little coaster, however you've got nowhere to put the entrance and the exit. So it's a good idea to get them set up straight away. So, we're going to be going up a little bit here, up to 20. Now, that's all we're going to go up, then we're going to do our first drop. Now, I'd like to be able to go straight down like that, but that's not, going, not quite going to work. So, we're going to have to do a level out there, then back down again. Now what I've found with this is a, so most coasters have uh, what's called a minimum height drop requirement. Um, if you don't meet that minimum height, uh, you're going to get a, um, sorry, minimum drop, uh, you're going to get a stat penalty. And what that means is all of your stats get divided by usually two, um, which is not something you want. but. If you do a level out piece and then a piece straight back down like we've got here, uh, that counts as a continuous drop. Like from 20 to 13 is uh, considered one single drop. So that that's, uh, might be a bit of useful information for you there. So we're going to go up again to 18, which should be okay. We're going up to 20 to start with and then the first climb up to 18, which should be fine. We're going to do a nice curve drop back down and we're going to go back up to 15 and then use our S bend, go back up again and we can bring that back around. Another S bend to get over that, that drop there. I'm not sure if we can go straight back down, we might have to just put one flat piece there. Now I'm playing the original version of the game here, so I've actually got access to the flat to steep transition in one piece. So I can use that here. Um, if you don't have access to that, you can just do a simple drop like that and then back up. Um, there's actually not a whole lot of difference to the stats if you do either one. So I'm just going to be doing. Whoops! I'm just going to be doing this and then back around. We can have one extra station piece. And that's basically it. Alright, so next we're going to be making some changes to the length of the train. So right now it's uh, sitting at two trains at 10 cars per train. Now with the queue line being so short, it's only going to be able to hold around six to seven people at any one time. So it's actually going to be better to reduce the number of cars per train down to three and have lots of small trains rather than uh, two long large trains. So uh, that's the logic behind that decision there. So uh, just going to make a few color adjustments to the track here, make it a bit more uh, fitting in with the surroundings. And then we can go ahead and do some testing. Alright, so we'll follow the first train around. Now if I have any concern at all, it's going to be this uh, first climb up here to 18. 
With a longer train I wouldn't be concerned, but given it's a shorter train that loses momentum quicker... No, there we go. It makes it quite easily in the end. It's not going too fast around that unbanked turn, so that's good. And yeah, that finishes off pretty comfortably, so I don't think there'll be any any nasty stats there at all. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so that's pretty good. Excitement rating's under 5, but I think we can adjust that with a little bit of scenery. We should be able to get that up there. So we'll just add in a few trees. I think this, this tree will go in quite nicely. And I think the only other thing we're going to be able to fit around here is uh, some ground shrubbery. So we'll just fill that out nicely. Okay, and now we can go ahead and watch uh, watch the thing go uh, full of passengers. that's pretty much the end of the video. Just a few things I wanted to point out here. Um, so we got the excitement rating above 5 with that additional scenery which, which is by no means essential but it's just nice to have and means we can charge that a little bit more for the coaster. Um, the other thing I should point out is that since we want the, the cars to cycle here or cycle through here very quickly we want to get that maximum waiting time down to about 5 to 6 seconds Otherwise that queue line will build up really fast and a lot of guests will miss out because there's not enough space in the queue. Um, and a bit of insight into the cost here. So the coaster cost about $2,500 to build originally, including the scenery. Um, and it made me uh, about uh, just under $23,000 here over the course of just under two years. So um, hopefully that gives you some insight into how effective a cheap coaster can be. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers!